In this video, we're going to talk about mentors. Now, this is such an important one to figure out because we're transitioning to this next phase. We've gone through our internships, we've gone through courses, we've gone through seminars, we've gone through our own education. Now we're a strength coach. We're making that transition to becoming a strength coach. It's really important at this stage to have someone that's experienced and trusted that you can utilize to help progress you past that initial education or that forming yourself into whatever it is that you think you should be as a strength coach. So let's dive into this module. I got a lot of really great insights here because I do a lot of this myself. So I really want to talk about both roles here and where we're going to be intimately involved in developing this mentor-mentee relationship as we go. So the definition of a mentor is an experienced, trusted advisor. That's a pretty broad term, right? So if you think about what a mentor is to you, the biggest thing you need to kind of come across is someone that you can utilize to help you understand and traverse the, the really hard part, the one that's not going to be talked about in school, the one that's not going to be talked about in a book or a course, maybe this one would be the exception, but the stuff about strength conditioning that you just simply don't know until you start doing it, right? The, oh my God, there's a lot of stuff in this profession that just isn't that great. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of hard days and a lot of underappreciation, a lot of undervaluing and a lot of other things. And it's really easy to get wrapped up in this, in this concept that, to be honest, if we don't really take some inventory from time to time and have someone to go through checks and balances with, you're going to really struggle. And mentors really fill that role. And I think that comes back again to that experienced, someone who is a strength kitchen coach who can understand and empathize what you're going through and trust that they, that they understand that you went through the trials and tribulations of, to become a strength coach and you're committed and they have your best interests at heart. Now, in regards to, you know, where does a mentor really come from, right? There's the, you can solicit it and you can pay for it, you know, and then you go to this website and you go through consultations, offer it there, right? Not a plug, but that's, that's a format, right? You can go any means or avenues you want to go, right? There's plenty of listed resources of other strength conditioning coaches that you can solicit their their counsel or their mentorship just for whatever cost. And there's people you work with. There's people within your family. There's your, your immediate family, extended family. There's your, the, the, the counterparts at work in the strength conditioning department, or maybe a, a counterpart within the athletic department. They're everywhere. There, there'd be anyone that could be experienced and trusted is going to be able to bring value to you. But that comes at some sort of conversation about where you're going to get the most value. Right? And I think that's the part that as we look through, you know, what is the inventory for why you should select a mentor or not, you know, having the humility to say, hey, I need help. I want some support. It's a big step. It's a lot of processing for a strength conditioning coach. But on the other end, it goes into how do you really know if you're getting the value from the time? Right, that process of going, okay, this person's giving me incredible insight. This person's going to give me some, some insider tips on how to really handle the situation. This person's going to give me their experience and wisdom that obtain knowledge over time of trials and trialing and experimenting and coming out with some sort of logic that's beyond you know whatever's in a text, but more in this practical application and understanding the probabilistic of thinking of. You could do that or you couldn't do that, and there's always going to be pros and cons. You know, but how do you get the value from that? And how do you understand this person's going to be a really good mentor? And I think that goes into this, why I'm saying from the context of you could pay for it, and that could come at, like, obviously a monetary cost, but there could be another thing of do you really get the value for that? You know, and something transactional, hey, I'm going to pay you for a service, and you're going to give me feedback and counsel and help me. There could be something more scripted, like a going through this course, or there could be something a little bit more structured where you're going to learn how to become a coach, like precision nutrition. They have, you know, the, the second step of, 
of their precision nutrition is more of this motivational interviewing, this working with the person, like this coaching type of program. And that's working with an advisor or a mentor. You know, there's the doing workshops and internships. There's, there's doing just certain, you know, intensives. There's a lot of very various things that you could pay for and get some sort of, some sort of feel for, okay, this is their style. And then it goes into this, is it a true interactive experience? Am I just giving you information and you're absorbing and you're supposed to figure it out? Versus the other end of, is it going to be, hey, I'm going to listen to you and hear what you're struggling with. And then I'm going to give you my best insights of what I think would benefit you. And I think that's a really hard thing to start to assess at the beginning of a mentor. And it's not this like a very established thing. If you're paying for it, yeah, it's got a very clear start and end, right? I'm going to have an hour consult. There is a beginning and an end. In regards to the majority of mentorship or mentoring, a lot of it comes from just this, I have a person I work with or I have a friend, a family member or a really close friend that I really respect and admire. And they just generally from time to time give me their their insight and their views on life and their overall perspective. They make me more well-rounded. They make me more competent and confident with my skill set and who I am as a person, as a strength coach. You know, these are all things that really start to unfold. But where I would really want to start to listen, lean in and in terms of this module is understanding that you should be extremely diverse with the folks that you are getting information from or getting some sort of insight from. Because the truth is, is if whatever you already know, you already know. And the people that you've gained that knowledge from, you've already gained it from, that we're all human and we all have our bias and our agendas and our things that make us us. Mentors are the same as mentees. They're people with just maybe a little bit more time served. And as you start to look at it from that dynamic, it doesn't mean that their value is less than, it just means that you've gained what you should have gained from that experience and it's time to move on and hopefully diversify your portfolio. Because the more well-rounded you are and the mentors you select and the people you interact with, combined with your evolution, your progression from this, hey, I just want to be a strength coach. I want to just start to get some volunteer. I want to get education. I want to start to do internships. I want to start doing these things to now, hey, I got an opportunity to be a strength coach or I am a strength coach. And I want to get someone to give me some feedback on how to improve. Like what's your day like? What's your week like? How do you get so much in in a period of time? How do you maintain stamina and perseverance and pushing through when other people don't really have the, the bandwidth to do that? How do you always have a great, how, how are you always in a great mood? How are you always excited to come to work? Like this is got to get old, right? Eventually, right? How do you prioritize work and family at any given moment? How do you do all these things? These are all really good questions. But the note that as you start to progress through, it's, hey, looking at that person and saying, hey, do you have the time to do this? And I would appreciate any bit of time. And if it's for transactional, like sure, you'd be expecting to pay for it, right? And that's the thing too, when you're looking at someone that you're trying to solicit as uh, advice or counsel is if they're seeking you out, they're probably not worth your time because they want to manufacture this and they're giving you a pre-selected thing. Like if I'm getting a nutrition plan from someone online that's just giving me a printed out sheet of what to eat in a given day, it doesn't seem based off of my needs or my wants, you know, the same thing with counsel and advice and mentorship. If it's just, hey, here's Tim's five principles of life, like wake up early and work hard and don't complain and you know, finish what you start, you know, this, this generic script that I just say, follow every day and you're going to live a life of purpose and meaning that doesn't seem like it's going to really pass its surface level of very agreed upon generic things, get you really much traction, right? You don't need that. You can get any, you can go to Barnes and Noble or Amazon today and find five self-help books and you're going to get the same generic list across the board. That's not mentorship. That's just regurgitating commonly held beliefs on why successful people are successful. I hope at this point, as you're going through the course, 
that you have some evaluation and the ability to praise that information is not as valuable as it is because that's the reality of majority of most of those pre or pre manufactured type of foundational things. That's you already knew that you don't need to strain to understand. And quite frankly, you probably already agree with that. It's less about the what and more about the how. How are you actually going to do that? Right? When you get up that next day, like if I want to get a workout in before work and a work day starts at five, what do I do? Like, how do I do that? Do I get up at three? Do I have to go to bed at 6.30? Like, come on. And I think that stuff just doesn't make sense. But if you're talking to a mentor, like, hey, when do you work out? I got to be really good with the time I have because I have two kids. Full, and I work, I own two businesses and I got to be really smart and strategic. So I get three 30 minute workouts a week that are short, sweet and intense and get me the most bang for my buck as possible. But I'm really dialed in nutrition. I try to get a lot of walking in. I park as far away from target as I can so I can get a little bit more walking in through from there. I try not to overeat, overindulge, uh, try to do as much as I possibly can from a cardiovascular standpoint and a mobility standpoint. Like I'm running through six, seven groups a day I can do through five, six movement preps right there, just taking them through that while coaching. Like, these are all little things, like, like quote-unquote hacks that, you know, honestly, that you're not going to get unless you actually get someone who actually has some experience and some sort of real understanding of what your job entails and going through that. But on the other note, making sure you're ready, right, the – you know, the idea is that you are receptive and ready for that opportunity, right? Are you prepared with questions, right? Like, if you want me to just give you a generic list of like, hey, here's five things I do every single day. I don't, I don't think that means that you really care that much. And why should I care? If you ask me to give you mentorship and you just say, give me your five things that you do every day, you don't care. That's my perception. You don't really want the information. But if you say, hey, I got some really big questions I've been struggling with and I wanted to get your time you mind if I just rattle them off with you to me that shows that you actually have a vested interest so the first thing I ask any single person I do a consult or mentorship with is is what do you want how can I help you how can I serve you and if you tell me well you just talk for me I don't think that's worth your time and you could pay me and I'll probably take your money but the reality is I probably should say Come back to me when you actually have something I can help you with and you actually think I can bring value to. Because if you're just looking for a generic list, just go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon right now. But on the other note, if you come to me with some sort of really thought out, I need to get this, that means that you respect my time because you know that I time is limited and I'm going to give you that time as well as long as you respect that time. But then, two, that you actually have something that you think there. And it comes back again to you're praising me. Can I bring value to you or any mentor that you're looking at? And you're asking them, does this person have either what I want from a professional standpoint, whatever I think they're giving me the perception they're doing from a personal standpoint, and can I gain from that? And can I access that? And can I understand that? And then from there, you got to really dial in this aspect of, When's the right opportunity? You know, and that's the thing as a head strength coach and as a system strength coach, the intuition, you know, that feeling of, of hey, this person's got time or doesn't. And if they're answering emails and they're just swearing up the storm, probably not a good time to ask them what the meaning of life is, right? That's just being very intuitive with your surroundings, right? Just using logic and reason. If you're working out, and you know they only have three 30-minute session or segments a week to actually get a training session in, probably not a great time to ask them about their philosophy. If there's a moment where you're sitting around and you're talking like anyone got any questions and no one ever says anything, but then as soon as you leave and you got to go do your work and they go, oh, by the way, I wanted to ask you this. Come on. You have to have that instinct about this. Of there's windows and you need to prepare for that. That if you want mentorship, you have to want to be mentored. That's the really bottom line of all this. All right, so let's pause here. There's a lot to unpack on this one. Obviously, I want you to read through the chapter here. And a lot of it's personal. Like, I deal with a lot of coaches. And, you know, part of the frustration of being a mentor is someone to 
to help other strength coaches comes at the cost of, hey, maybe you're not really re listening. You're not really hearing what I'm saying. And I think the book ties in that a lot. Like we go deep into that aspect of the, the hardship of being an actual mentor and someone looking for it with advice and counsel. And, and what I would do is try to find better windows and try to figure out how do I get the most from that time that I actually do have. So unpack that, look through that, and then we'll hit this next module. Module task, by the way, is going to be going into what mentors do you have and what are some of the more valuable things that you've gotten from them? All right, let's break, hit that next module.